Welcome to part five of Early Americans in Oceania. Now we're gonna look at the fall of the Mayans. For the Mayans, there was not a distinct division between the natural and supernatural spheres, but rather a constant interna interaction between them. Uh, to the Mayans, the universe was made up of three realms, the upper world, the middle world, and the underworld. Right, the gods and the spirits and the ancestors all dwelt in the upper where, upper world and underworld, and they shared the middle world with human beings. Right, uh, the four quadrants of the universe itself were arranged around the uh, cent uh, around a central axis aligned with the four cardinal points of the compass. Right, where the god connected to each one. Now, symbolically, the four directions of the axis also had a color, and often trees and birds also associated with them. For example, the primary direction, the east, was associated with the rising sun and was symbolized by the color red, right? The west, where the sun sets, um, was uh, linked with the underworld and its associated color was black. North was connected with the ancestors and death in white. The south was associated with the sun and, and yellow. And the center, which ran through the great axis, was uh, creation and was colored green, right? The Mayans were polytheistic, right? And they had a, a, a pantheon of deities that often had overlapping uh, names and, and, and responsibilities, right? And overlapped with themselves and with other cultures in the region. Uh, but Mayan gods were not distinct entities. They had a very fluid identity. They could shift between various aspects, various avatars, manifestations, right? We know more than 250 Mayan names of gods, but there weren't 250 different gods. Right, these gods were complex, complex in how they were uh, 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 presented and how they were depicted. Right, sometimes they're shown as humanoids, sometimes as half human, half animal hybrids, and sometimes as 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 actual beasts, both real and mythical. Right, one of the most important uh, gods was a god named Chach, or the rain god, who is often portrayed possessing the feathers of or feathers features of aquatic creatures. Right. Um, he was believed to frequent the caves where storms were thought to originate and was sometimes shown carrying lightning bolts, right? Chalk appears to be one of the oldest gods in Mesoamerica, right? He can be associated with Talak, the Teotihuacan uh, 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 god who is important much later to the Aztecs, right? They'll adopt him. Uh, religion infused all aspects of Mayan life, right? Priests and high status were high status individuals in Mayan society. They played a very key role in government, in war, in uh, economy, as well as religion, right? Education was mainly for the priests. They had to learn how to read and write. They had to be part of religious observances. They had to be very well uh, 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 versed in math and astronomy so that they can calculate the timing of religious ceremonies. Uh, bloodletting played a very crucial and center role in Mayan religious ritual. Human blood was considered precious, right? It was a precious substance and thus the highest sacrifice that could be presented to the gods. Self-inflected bloodletting was a standard form of worship, right? Human sacrifice and the removal of the heart was regularly practiced um, and suggest, as suggested both by artistic and archaeological evidence. Uh, decapitation was another common form of sacrifice. Blood spurting from the chest or neck was sometimes portrayed as quetzal feathers, right? A highly prized trade item that helped emphasize the preciousness and the, and the importance of human blood and bloodletting. Now, with the importance of blood in Mayan culture, it's very easy to focus on those more lurid aspects of Mayan civil civilization, but we need to take note of there was a number of great intellectual achievements that were accomplished by the Mayans. Uh, the foremost among these, of course, is the creation of a calendar and a complex written language, right? The Mayans developed a base 20 mathematical system, including a concept of zero. And this system is quite flexible and allowed the Mayan mathematicians to calculate sums into the hundreds of millions, right? Uh, the Mayans were uh, the only Mesoamericans to create a complex written language, a sophisticated system that consisted of a mixture of ideographs that represented objects and symbols and uh, you know glyphs that represented sounds, not too different from that logographic system used in Chinese language, right? When you take a look at at least the basic structure, if not the form and, and look, right? 
uh, each of these symbols are called a glyph, right? And it's known, uh, there's a total of 2,000 known Mayan glyphs, right? Uh, we have about 15,000 Mayan inscriptions uh, in stone and pottery that survived that we can use for study. Uh, the Mayans also wrote on a type of paper that was made out of bark, but unfortunately, the books that were written by the Mayans mostly were destroyed by the Spanish conquistadors that saw this Mayan written language as sacrilege. Only four of these books survive. Now, fortunately, these books are all text on astronomy and on the calendar, right? Now, for a long time, scholars were unable to decipher the Mayan language, but when they noticed the frequent occurrence of certain symbols for dates that were also on the Mayan calendar, that gave them a starting point to begin interpreting, interpreting some of these glyphs, right? The discovery of the royal tomb in the jungle at Plenque provides an important source for Mayan, Mayan hieroglyphs, right? There, it's the, uh, there's an entire area, a huge limestone slab that's completely covered in, uh, in glyphs that's, of course, aptly named the, the Temple of Inscriptions, right, for the sheer number of Mayan glyphs at this, at this site. Now, around the 8th and 9th centuries, classical Mayan civilization began to go into decline. And the reasons for this, it's various. Uh, there's a lot of debate on it. Uh, the theories include overpopulation, overcultivation of the land, drought, erosion, deforestation, uh, warfare, internal rebellions, and, and which which one of these is right? Well, it's probably a combination of these factors, right? There was a dramatic drop in the population accompanied by a succession of new construction and even the wholesale abandonment of cities during this period, right? Uh, studies of skeleton from Copan, for example, show a pronounced sign of malnutrition and disease between the years of 650 and 850 CE, right? Uh, power shifted to the northern Yucatan Peninsula, where newer, newer cities like Uxmal and Chichen Itza are going to fare better, and Toltec civilization will flourish at least for a few centuries before fading away and ultimately being uh, uh, this region will be dominated by the Aztec. Now, of course, the Aztec will be the group that will be uh, uh, dominating central uh, this central Mexico at the time of the arrival of the Europeans, right? Until ultimately they too will be subjugated by the Spanish. 